What is good, beautiful people? I'm your host, King Lion of Blocks. Um, I'm trying out this new setup. It's not 100%, so um, we're going to talk about that uh, later. Um, just so you know, I'm going to be posting some older videos that I've done. I just have my old location, so you won't see this new location until I'm complete, except for this episode. Well, except for this video, um, because I just recently went to go see Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, so I wanted to do the re uh, review of the movie. <clears throat> I will probably be uh, slipping in some other clips of it uh, from my, another perspective because I'm going to go watch it again at a different uh, theater. The theater I went to see it at, it was in real D, 3D. And while the company that I was with, which was not my company, which was other people, was not the worst, it was not the best. And then the, also the screen, it was in 3D and everything supposed to look better in 3D. It really wasn't. <clears throat> but... Um, to get into the movie, I would say I would give it, uh, and it's a two hours and 15 minute movie for the first half out for the first hour. It was, it was mid, I was it was mid, but that last, last hour, last hour, 15 minutes, it was, it was pulling. It was, it was giving you everything that you needed in Spider-Man. Every Spider-Man fan that didn't like Tom Holland, I feel like he kind of earned the title of Spider-Man, at least at the end of that movie for any of the naysayers. Um, me being said naysayer, um, the things that I didn't like about the movie, which kind of stem from the previous movies, um, which was, which, which, what I mean, previous movies, I mean the previous, um, trilogy of Spider-Man. So not the Andrew Garfield or the Tobey Maguire, but more so the Tom Holland ones, um, but without further ado, let's get into the let's get into the review of the movie. So as we start off, we start off as Peter Parker, um, his secret being told by Mysterio right before he died that Peter is Spider Man. Um, Peter rescues Mary Jane to get her out of the crowd of people because now people are trying to get pictures of him and Mary. They want to ask, um, well, that's not Mary. It's Michelle Jones. Is Mary Jane's name or Zendaya? Anyway, anyway, um, <clears throat> Peter is now getting death threats and people are, are assuming that he is a murderer. Him and his family and friends are now, lives are in jeopardy. Peter is arrested um, and him and his family, well, him and his friends are now not able to go to college or MIT because of the recent events. The whole world knows that he is Peter. What will happen now? Um, so what happens is that... Uh, for the murder of Mysterio, people wanted to know what happened. They wanted, they blamed Peter for it. Um, and I feel like the movie in itself was a, it was a mashup of just um, callbacks and Easter eggs. And, and I could see why they tried to put this, this, this movie on as much hush hush, which props to them for like being in the 21st century to try and keep this movie on hush. They did, they, they did, they think. Um, one of the first callbacks was the fact that they brought in, uh, Daredevil and everyone was like okay the person that's in the movie that puts his arm down in the trailer that's Daredevil they did have that scene in there anymore but they did take it out to where um, Peter's being told by his legal his legal um, I can't think of the name but his lawyer and his lawyer was telling them that hey you need to um, you you won't face any charges from this that there's no way that they have th these charges of murder will not stick on you and the person telling him this is Matt Murdock and as Matt Murdock is telling him this, um, a brick busts through Peter's window and Matt grabs it. And he's like, how did you do that? He says, I'm just, I'm one hell of a uh, lawyer. <clears throat> and everyone was like, oh, that shit is tight. They brought Matt Murdock. I was, I was kind of hoping that he, he had more screen time. Like he was actually going to be in there like fighting, but it's not a, it's not a daredevil movie. It's a Spider-Man movie. I was okay with that. I was okay with that. Um, so with Peter trying to figure out how am I going to fix this, I ruined my friend's life. I ruined my life. Aunt May gets pulled over. Not pulled over. Um, they get arrested. Um, Happy is the co-owner of Stark Enterprise, which is now under investigation, and he's in trouble. So Peter just wants the way to try and fix this issue best way he can. So he goes to talk to Doctor Strange and he asks Doctor Strange, is there a spell that can erase people's memory of this event and or at least like turn back time? I think that's what he originally wanted was to turn back time. Um, unfortunately, without the time stone, he could not do that. He could, however, erase people's memory. And that was a spell that he uses in the trailer. And as he's telling Peter that the spell is that no one will remember that he is Spider-Man. 
Peter was like, wait, hold on a second. Can Aunt May know who I am? Because that makes stuff easier. And and um, Dr. Strange was telling him, okay, but we don't want to keep adding to the spell. It's going to just mess it up. And as he's telling him this, he's like, okay, fine, that's fine. But can we add in, um, can we add in Ned? Um, wait a minute, can we add in Zin, um, MJ? Wait a minute, can we add in such and such? And that's when the spell blows up. And as Doctor Strange is trying to contain the spell, a couple stragglers get out. Um, all because of the fact that Peter asked one last thing to the switch that he wants anyone that knew he was Spider Man before he before the whole world knew he was Spider Man to be the only people to remember that he is Spider Man. And that's the or how they worded it. It was a lot better. It was like it's everyone that knows who Peter Parker is Spider Man to still know. And so everyone that knew who Spider Man was knew, well, came to this, uh, to, came to this world, and so that's how they got the, all the the villains and um, spoilers. Because I'm, I'm, well, not really spoilers. Because I'm making sure that I put in the Let There Be Carnage video after this or before this. Um, that's why Venom was also there because everyone that knew who he was came to that world. As they are dealing with the um, aftermath of containing the spell, Peter was Peter was like, "Well, I'm sorry, Doctor Strange. I didn't know this was gonna happen." Doctor Strange was like, "It's okay, Peter. Um, I know that you tried everything you could on your end, and so that's why you came to me." And Peter was like, "Try everything on my end." And Doctor Strange was like, "Yeah, you you did call them and ask them to reconsider, right?" And Doctor and Peter was like, "I could do that." I could do that? And Dr. Strange is like, yes, you didn't think to call them to ask them to reconsider before you came to me to erase everyone's fucking memory? And he looked at them and was like, I can do that? And Dr. Strange kicks him out. But Peter is going to one of the um, colleges that they tried to get into to ask what, to speak with the reps. Um, unfortunately the rep is the rep is on their way to their plane. Um, so Peter follows them to the intersection, which is in the trailer. And as he's talking to the lady to have her reconvince her 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 decision, his Peter Tinger goes off. His Peter Tingle goes off. Hate that name, but that's what it is on that. His Peter Tinger goes off, and that's when we get Dr. Octopus. He comes in, he gets he comes in strutting, destroying shit, and he hits him with the line. Hello, Peter. And Peter transforms and everything, and they fight. They do the fighting thing. Um, as Doc Ock ca uh, captures Peter and rips off his his mask and everything, he realizes that he's well. He rips his his chest piece off and is like, "Hmm, nanotechnology." And the nanobites combined with the the claws, which I was kind of hoping that they upgraded his claws. That was the way that they upgraded his claws to give him that cool, badass look for this new show. Because, like, you know, Electro looks different. Um, Sandman kind of looks different. Hell, even Doc Ock, not Doc Ock, but Green Goblin looks different. So I was hoping that that was um, Doc Ock's way of looking different. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Um, Peter's suit controlled the arms, and so Doc Ock really couldn't do anything. Um, he helped people escape and everything. And when Peter was able to trap him up, he was like, "Hey, I'm in control now. <clears throat> so tell me what, tell me how'd you get here?" And as he's telling him how he got here from his point of view, when um, his world's Peter, Tobey Maguire, uh, stopped him from creating the sun or creating the power of the sun in the palm of my hands. Green Goblin shows down and throws down grenades, and right before he blows up Peter, uh, Doctor Strange takes him away and takes him back to the Sanctum Sanatorium and explains to him that explains to him that because of his spell and his him putting in all those those requests and that last request that the everyone that knows who Peter Parker is or was in every dimension is coming now to this dimension. So um, that means Doc Ock, that means Green Goblin. He points over to the lizard who's there now. Um uh, as you guys know, Electro spoilers, Jamie Foxx doesn't know who Peter Parker is, or I guess Electro doesn't know who Peter Parker is. So that doesn't make any sense. Um, but I guess they just need a reason for Jamie to be in this movie, uh, Venom, um, and 
uh, Sandman. Sandman is also in it too. So all of those people are now in this world um, looking to just get revenge for Peter. With Ned's help, they catch a lead about a mysterious person uh, flying around in the woods, coming to find out that that was Electro. Um, with Sandman's help, they were able to capture Electro. But once Peter captures Electro, Sandman is like, what did you do? And so now Peter has to capture Sandman because he's about to go all uh, Sandcastle on his ass. <clears throat> we we meet this, we get to the segment where the Green Goblin is um, covering up his, his, his jet... A glider basically and he takes his mask off and evil green goblin or i guess green goblin and norman reedus or um norman osborne there we go norman osborne and green goblin are talking and he's telling him that you are weak that you should not have been here that you should kill peter parker and as norman's trying to ignore the the voices in his head he busts the mask and goes to find um the feast the it's, it's spelled for something i'll probably put it down here but the place that mary um aunt may works at uh, Willem Dafoe is the greatest actor in history. He was able to portray a weak and defenseless man with the swagger and confidence of a non-weak and defenseless man and was able to uh, make Aunt May believe that he is defenseless and needs rescuing. Uh, one good thing about people knowing who he is, he doesn't have to explain anything and he's very, he's very relaxed with taking his mask off in front of people. Like, I know the whole world knows who you are, but like, you just... You spend more time taking that mask off than Toby did in like to show that he was Peter, he was Spider-Man and just like not a person stunt double dressed up like him. Um, but yeah, he, he goes into there and this is where we meet my, my first gripe with this, um, with this movie. It's the Aunt May character. <clears throat> now, um... I was not a, I wasn't too much of a fan of Aunt May finding out who Peter was at the beginning of the show at the show uh beginning of his trilogy I think it was episode 1 he found out who yeah at the end of the first movie he found out uh Aunt May found out that Peter was Spider-Man I was like okay that I guess that couldn't be any harm Little did I know we get to the third movie and Aunt May's telling Peter that hey we should try and cure these people these people have nothing to do with our time. They have nothing to do with our world, but we should help them because helping them is right. Now, I do know that that is the Aunt May shtick to help people out and that, you know, everyone deserves a second chance. That's fine. That's Aunt May's character. But this Aunt May was pushing her her beliefs a little too hard on Peter when Peter was already in his mind, had it in his mind that we're going to send these people back to their world, that these people have nothing to do with us. We already have enough issue as is with the whole government knowing who we are, people not allowing me to go to college. Like this, this is this is not it. This is this is not it. We don't need to be helping these people out. But unfortunately, Aunt May didn't see this way. She kept it in Peter's head that we should help these people no matter what. Because of the fact that like when they met Norman uh, when they met Norman Osborne, he was Norman. And so he was real frail um speaking. He was like, I don't know what's happening. Every time like it gets dark and then he takes over. And so she Norman basically weak like he basically softened her heart to made her um feel sad about the situation. And so when when uh Peter gets Norman to the um Sanctum Centorum, Doctor Strange captured him, captures him. Doctor Strange lets them know that, hey, you will go back to your time. Yeah, unfortunately, it is at this point that they all realize that to each one of them, each and every one of them, they are dead. Except for Sandman. He technically didn't die. So I don't know why they were they were portraying that that um that reality that he died. But like, yeah, Sandman told Norman Osborn and, and Dr. Octopus that you both died. Uh, Jamie tells the, the reptile that he dies and then he realizes that he also dies. Um, so they're, they're like, OK, you send us back. We're just going to die. And Dr. Strange was like, this is, this is your reality. This is what happens to you in your timeline. And at this moment, this is where you get the please don't fuck up, Peter. And Peter does not want this to happen he doesn't want these people to die unfortunately this is their this is just their life so as dr strange is about to reset this um accident to this, this mistake peter grabs the box that was set to that has the spell in it he was gonna peter grabs the box that has the spell in it 
to reset all this and he goes and runs off basically we get to the, this uh segment they could take out um dr strange and peter are now fighting for this box that has the spell in it um for whatever reason even when peter's astro in, in his astral form his body's i guess peter tingle spider senses will prevent him from being able to get caught even without his body that doesn't make any sense but i'm gonna let it rock um when he's in the mirror world um Peter realizes that this is just geometry. So he's able to make a trap for Dr. Strange as he's trying to get out and captures the box and goes back to his world, leaving Dr. Strange stranded in the mirror dimension without his little device to, to take him to and fro uh, dimensions, which I also had an issue with that in the first and the uh, Captain Dr. Strange movie where the fact that he needed his, this, this little device to go to go to dimensions when originally Dr. Strange didn't need that. But that's neither here nor there. <clears throat> so, um, Peter goes back to goes back to the Sanctum Centurion and let them know that he trapped Doctor Strange in this mirror dimension. But his mission is now going to help these guys get free, um, to not only free them but to cure them. And if they don't want to get cured, they can stay here for when Doctor Strange gets free and he can send them back and kill them. Um, ultimately, they decide to go with Spider Man. Peter Parker to get cured, um, which gives us this little segment. Um, Happy is whipped. It's a little side note. It's a little like side thing that they they give a little note onto. But apparently, um, Aunt May is just is just slinging. She like she just slinging it. And she's in her hot girl summer because like at the first uh, beginning segments of the the, the movie, um, Aunt May and Happy are no longer together. But Happy allows them to stay at her house uh, at his house because they have no place to stay that has privacy um just throw that tidbit in so as they're in happy's house um peter has invited uh, dr octopus the electro green goblin um sandman the, the the reptile stays in the truck downstairs but peter works to try and cure all of them peter is able to make a device to give doc octa control over his arms so now he is technically good um, and as he's trying to cure Electro, his Peter senses, spider senses, I'm gonna keep calling it Peter senses, but his spider senses go off like crazy. And he's trying to figure out what it is, like who is about to betray him. And he finds out it is Green Goblin. And as Green Goblin is turned back into himself, he's laughing and telling, he's telling them that we are gods, that we do not need to be ashamed of our gifts, that we should rule over this world and as he's telling saying this um electro takes off this device that was trying to turn him normal and gets his energy back because he takes the stark reactor that was helping create things for them and they they fight they have this big scene dr octopus gets blasted out of a, out of the window um and may takes a serum and some other things to help cure the rest of them and runs away green goblin whooped spider-man's ass that nigga hit him with the undertaker last ride and then double-edged spine buster aaron anderson slash uh triple h slash um the nigga from uh nation of domination i can't remember his name but he he wrecked his ass you would not believe that norman reedus is how old is he 66 years old this nigga did all his stunts all his stunts he returned it, i'm gonna put this up here but it says that wilma foe only agreed to return as green goblin as long as he was able to form his own stunts and fight scenes this nigga is 65 boxing tom holland get it at me as i was saying putting in work to spider-man he is whooping spider-man's ass so at the end of this you know um uh, spider-man finally gets the he actually doesn't get the upper hand um green goblin pretty much whoops his ass up and down the stairs of this this however stories um place all the way down to the bottom floor and as he's like pulling up uh, Peter's head, Aunt May's up with a stick like she's about to bust him in the head with something. And she, I, Peter is telling, not Peter, but Green Goblin is telling Peter that, you know, no good deed goes unharmed. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I kind of got a chuckle out of what happened next, only because of I just did not like, I didn't like how they portrayed Aunt May. She was just too goddamn nosy. 
in this movie. Like she was just trying to like, I understand helping people, but these are bad people that aren't for whatever reason are sick, but they are not from your world. And that you don't even know if fixing these people will save their state, save their, um, the state that they're going to die in. But nevertheless, um, Green Goblin rams the glider into her, like rams the glider into her. Um, and then just to make, just to make sure that she stays dead, he throws one of the pumpkin grenades. And as he's throwing the pumpkin grenade, Peter's jumping in the way of it to try and deflect it. And I was kind of hoping that they did like the Spider-Man one physics where he jumps in the way. And even though his suit gets destroyed, he's okay. Um, his suit kind of gets a little destroyed and it looks like Aunt May is alive. And as they get up to try and get away, um, Aunt May saying that, you know, this is, this is, this is, um, it's all going to be okay. This is going to be okay. And Peter's like, no, this is not going to be okay. We should have just sent them back. And Peter and Aunt May was like, no, no, we should not have sent them back. They need to be fixed. This is, this is, this is, this is okay. They have to be fixed because what you did was right. Don't believe what he said about my morals, that my morals is wrong because of the fact that with great power comes great responsibility. I audibly groaned when she said that. Not only the fact that I knew what was coming next, but the fact that I, I she didn't need to say that. Like, y'all basically gave us the Uncle Ben, which I know a lot of people was like, damn, y'all, y'all, y'all made a new Spider-Man without the Uncle Ben, which they kind of end up doing when they killed off Tony. They gave us the Uncle Ben segment. So to, for us to get the Tony die, dying and then... With great power comes great responsibility from Aunt May of all people. Just it was just it was just doing the most, doing the most. And then right after that, we find out that Aunt May is dying. But whatever happened, um, either from the explosion or from getting actually Grant the bottle ran over by um, the glider, she dies. Peter is sad because um, now he is alone. He doesn't have his Aunt May. He doesn't have Tony. And he goes to the one place that he's able to be himself at the top of the school building. That's his place of um, to clear his head. Um, at this time, uh, MJ and Ned are are confused. They don't know what happened. They don't know if their friend is alive or dead. And so they are about to press the button on the device when Ned moves his hand to create a portal. Um, they said, the, how'd you do that? He said, I just wanted to find Peter. And when they tried it again, they create a portal to Peter Parker. We are at the half, we are at the hour and 15 mark. Remember when I said that the first hour and 15 was a little mid? That was mainly because of Aunt May. She really should just kept her mouth shut and just let them send them motherfuckers back. But because she wanted to be oh, helpful and everything, this is why now the world is in danger. <clears throat> But that other, this other hour and 15, oh, buckle up, boys and girls. We about to get in it. So Ned opens up a portal and we see Spider-Man. And he's looking down. And it's like, Peter. They're like, Peter, come here. Peter, come here. And as he goes through the mirror, we see that it is the amazing Spider-Man. He rips off the mask. It's Andrew Garfield. The whole crowd goes, wow. Ooh. Well, actually, no, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Um, when I was there, when I was watching, I was like, it's Toby. Not knowing that it's the actual amazing Spider-Man. So I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And when he rips off the mask, I was like, boo, it's Andrew. Fuck you, Andrew. Um, and they're like, are you Sp- you're Peter Parker? He's like, yeah, I'm Peter Parker. And he's like, they had this little funny segment where he has him, they have him um, do something to make him prove these Peter. So he hangs from the wall. He's like, that's not good enough. Can you crawl? He said, I think it's good enough. They're like, no, it's not. He's like, fine. He crawls over to the wall to get some cobwebs and falls back down. And they're like, okay, well, you got one Peter. Let's try this again to get Peter, our Peter. And so they're doing it again. And when they're not able to get the portal to appear where they want it to, it appears in the back. And out comes out Toby fucking Maguire. This nigga comes out in his in his like normal clothes. He's like, hey, um, so I saw this portal open up. I'm sorry, I need to spin on my mic. I saw this portal open up and I just thought I'd hop in. I didn't know what was going on. Um, and as he looks around, he says, You guys, he's not with you, is he? And they're like, no. And Toby looks at Andrew because Andrew's in his Spider-Man outfit and Toby's in his regular outfit and he shoots out the webs and everything and they do the little jumping around thing. It's like, you're Spider-Man. You're also Spider-Man. And 
they they realized that okay we're both spider-man we were looking for this world spider-man to help him out um hold on a second guys to be continued i gotta make sure my food's not burnt so they go to look for peter they found him at the school and this is where they um toby and andrew they meet they meet tom and they like say that hey um We've all lost someone, and 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 Tom was like, "Don't tell me you you've hurt, you've been hurt before." And Andrew's like on the verge of tears because he's like, "I've lost Gwen Stacy, my world's Mary Jane. I didn't, I wasn't able to save her." Tom, Toby was like, "I lost my uncle Ben. I wasn't able to save him." <clears throat> That's where t- uh, Tom comes in, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, I lost my Aunt May." And it's all my fault. And I was like, is is while you do share some of the blame, it's not your fault. And May should have shut the fuck up and she would still been alive. I know a lot of people are not gonna like this. This is a, maybe a hot take, but those people probably they did probably did not even save them. Yeah, they cured them of their ailment, but they're probably gonna still go back to their same fixed dimension and die the same fucking way. So like I like Aunt May died for no reason whatsoever besides just to give Peter that uncle ben segment <clears throat> which again he already had with tony so they have this this moment they feel better um and they go and have this whole science segment where they go and fix everything and they uh compare stories about who spider-man is what spider-man story is different they they give the uncomfortable feeling with andrew because he's like you yeah, when they're talking about um how are we going to fix lizard and andrew's like well i said i cured him once i'll cure him again and they're all looking at him like you cured him you don't look like you you you, you just don't look like you're the, the science person he's like yeah i, I built everything i did everything on my side he's like oh okay cool cool take a look at this guy he said he, he cured everything this guy he don't even look like type to get put in lockers this guy anyway <clears throat> so they have this moment with each other um Andrew feels bad about his him losing uh, Gwen Stacy. Um, Ned asked Toby if he had any friends and what happened to his, basically his version of Ned. And he was like, my friend died in my arms before he tried to kill me. Which, shout outs to, I don't know the person's name, but there was a, 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 a TikToker that did a 616 Ned and then the MC, MCU Ned Come to find out that that Ned in the 616 becomes Hobgoblin. And if you look at the new pictures of Ned now, this nigga is ripped. Like, <clears throat> so I, I, my, my head cannon of what they're going to do is um, they're going to make this Ned Hobgoblin. It's going to be interesting, but I'll explain how this is going to happen when I continue on. Um, so they, they work together. They try, they come up with all these cures for each of the, the bad guys. They get them over to the imp, uh, the, statue of liberty to have the big the big confrontation of boss fight um as they're fighting uh well before they even fight they have this they have the uh segment which i thought was really really fucking funny they had the segment where so so there's this meme right there's this meme where all the spider-mans um come in and there's like um, they, they, like they asked Toby, Hey, how do you do your webs? And Toby was like, well, mine's organic. And they look at him like, yours is organic. How does that work? And they had that meme in the movie where he's telling them like, yeah, you know, it's just, it just comes out. I don't need anything. And they're like, how does that happen? Does it come out everywhere? Do you get like a web block? And he's like, yeah, I had a web block. It was like existential crisis. And he's like, oh, tell me about it. And he's like, yeah. And they asked him like, Hey, what's the weirdest monster you or what's the weirdest monster you fought? And he's like, well, you've met most of them. And uh, Toby mentions Venom in the movie, <clears throat> which again is interesting because we are at the tail end of this movie and Venom has not shown up, not one part of this movie, but he's in this world. And I remember, I remember seeing him, like I said, in the trailer, not in the trailer, but in my last movie, Let There Be Carnage, last video, Let There Be Carnage, he's in this world. Um... Which I guess I kind of realized that like halfway in the movie, they're just going to have him be like a cameo at the end. Um, which they end up doing in an interesting way. Um, <clears throat> but like I said, the they have the big boss battle. The team realizes that they have to work to... Each Spider-Man works, but feel, realizes... Each Spider-Man realizes that they have to work together. None of them have been in the team before besides Tom. 
Tom was like, hey, I've been with the group called the Avengers. And they're like, who are the Avengers? Earth Mightiest Hero. Are you in a band? You're in a band. That's so cool. And he's like, no, we're not in a band. That has nothing to do with this. I've been in the team before. Let me run this. I'll be Spider-Man 1. Uh, to- Toby was like, I'll be Spider-Man 2. And Andrew was like, okay, I guess I'll be Spider-Man 3. They dog Andrew Garfield Spider-Man through this whole movie. Like, he just feels like he's just ass. He's like, no, but you're amazing. You're like, you're you're amazing. You're like, you're amazing. Amazing Spider-Man. <clears throat> and as they're like going through this, they, they're able to cure each of the people. Um, but that's when Norma Osborn hops back in. He's like, this is my movie, bitch. Don't forget about me. Um, he captures the box and puts a bomb in it. And as they capture it back, the bomb explodes, ripping the dimension in half. As, uh, as they are trying to now fight to get the world back to contain because the multiverse has been exploded, um, they now have to fight Green Goblin. As they're fighting Green Goblin, as they're fighting Green Goblin, MJ falls. And like every classic Spider-Man scene, they have the scene where Peter now has to go and try and rescue MJ. And as he's going to try and rescue MJ, the glider goes and tackles him out the way. And who goes in to redeem himself but Andrew Garfield. And this man has learned from his mistake because he's no longer doing the web hand. He's actually going to pick her up and collapses. Like he picks her up and uh, lands, sticks it. 10 out of 10. He gets the, the score. And as he's like realizes that he has saved an MJ or his Gwen Stacy, um, he cries. And like MJ was like, Are you okay? And he's like, Yeah, I'm gonna be okay. And I'm not gonna lie to y'all, that that kinda that kind of got me. It kind of got me in the feels because like he wasn't able to save his, his Mary Jane or his Gwen Stacy, but he was able to save Tom's. And that was like his whole redemption arc. I kind of felt like that they were going to do that because he wasn't able to save her. He needed this. He needed this win. So, um, yeah, they they're able to save um, MJ. Tom is beating up on Green Goblin and whooping his ass. Um, when Toby and Andrew realize this, they they're they're debating on whether or not to intervene. And Tom is giving haymakers. He is whooping this nigga's ass. Putting a hole, putting his fist through his face to the point of which now that uh, Green Goblin's on the floor, not trying to, he's not able to get up. Tom picks up the glider and is about to stab him. But right before he stabs him, Toby gets in the way and, and holds it down. He's like, no, it's had enough. And Tom was trying to go, but Toby isn't like, isn't, isn't budging at all. That's how you know that Toby is stronger. He's the stronger Spider-Man. Don't at me. Um... But he he pushes back the the glider, puts it down, tells him, "No, you can't do this. He, he has to live." Unfortunately, Green Goblin does not agree with that, so he stabs Peter, um, trying to stab Tom, but was unsuccessful. Peter falls down. As uh, Green Goblin is laughing, Andrew throws Tom the serum. They inject Norman with it, and he goes back to normal. Um. As they they do the big old, you know, wrap everything up, we get a segment with uh, Jamie and Andrew Garfield where he's telling them that, hey, now I got to go back to being a nobody. And he's like, no, you were never a nobody. He said, yes, I was. I had fucked up teeth. I had bad eyes. I had a comb over. No one paid attention to me until I was this. And he says, that's not true. And he said, you know what? I appreciate it, man. You were here for me. You have the people. You have the suit. You have the power. You have the looks. I just wish you were black. And he's like, you know, that's just not, it's not fair. I wish you were a black Spider-Man. And, he's, and he was like, yeah, I know, man, it's, it's okay. And he was like, I know this, this, there's got to be a black Spider-Man out there. Again, callback or the, the Easter egg to Miles Morales. I, I got a good chuckle out of that too. Um, But this is where we get to like the, the, the sad, it was a bittersweet ending because while the villains have not been taken care of, everyone's been cured. Um, The world is kind of out of not not kind of the world is fucked right now because of the the multiverse um imploding or unraveling whichever one you want to use um dr strange is using the best of his his capability to contain it but he's not able to and that's when peter realizes that it's his fault and that if the whole world did not know he existed would that fix it and dr strange tells him that yes if the world did not know peter parker 
who Peter Parker was, not even the fact that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, but who Peter Parker is, it will fix this. And so Peter has to make a, you know what, no, Tom Holland, Spider-Man, Peter Parker has to make a tough decision. And he makes the decision to make sure that the whole world forgets who he is so that way he can save the world. And that is a Spider-Man, that is a Spider-Man thing. Like I gave Tom Holland Spider-Man so much right because he just had everything handed to him. Everything was just given to him. He had no struggle, but this man made an actual sacrifice. He gave up the woman that he loved, his friends, his whole life, which I'm going to be honest, if Aunt May hadn't died, it would have been a little bit harder thing to do. But the fact that she's dead, that's the only lifeline he had left besides his friends and family. But well, his friends and that was about it. His it, it was still a hard it was still a hard decision to make. Um, and so he tells he tells everyone, he tells the other Spider-Man that thank you very much. You guys are awesome for helping me with this. He sends everyone back and then he goes tells um MJ and Ned that they they're going to forget about him that he is going to disappear not he's not going to disappear but they're not going to remember him and it's going to be okay and as Doctor Strange finishes the spell they forget who he is and the whole world forgets who Peter Parker is who Spider Man really is um, we go fast forward to Peter going to the um, donut shop where um, MJ works at, and he's trying to order a coffee, trying to uh, have her remember who he is. And when he does that, he, he realizes that, one, Ned is, in, is an engineer now. He's in uh, MIT. Um, and he's in MIT with, actually, MJ. And when he tries to muster, muster the courage to tell MJ who he is, he notices that the scar that she got, it's healing, but it's still there, and it's a symbol of the fact that the people that he he loves are in danger because they know who he is. And at the end of the day, he he can't have that. He can't have people know he's Spider Man. He can't he can't willingly put people in danger. So he tells MJ that you know, thank you for the coffee. So he moves on, and that scene was very powerful because. Not only does he, not only is he now alone, he doesn't even have the woman that he loves anymore because she doesn't remember him. And you can see him tearing up and almost crying. He goes and moves into this crappy hotel, uh, this crappy apartment that's in someone, the person next to me said that that was the Spider-Man 2 apartment. I'm not entirely sure that's the case. Um, I think there's just a crappy apartment in New York. They all kind of, kind of look the same. Um, and as he's living there, he starts working on a new suit, and it's the classic um, Spider-Man suit or the the animated series Spider-Man suit, just the you know the classic red and blue one, not the Rennie's, not the Rimey, um Amazing, or even the new Tobey Maguire one. It's the classic Spider-Man look, and he goes and he he wings uh, web swings away to go save the day, <clears throat> and that's the end of the movie. Um, we get the we get two cutscenes though. Um, one cutscene is the Venom cameo because he's a cameo in this movie and not actually helping because you know God forbid they actually have him come in and help them. Um, and <clears throat> Eddie tells um, Eddie's getting told this information from one of the tourist people in Mexico about the whole uh, New York uh, fiasco and about the Hulk and uh, Tony Stark. And as they're, they're telling them this. Um, Venom, Eddie, Eddie and Venom get sent back to their dimension because they were able to fix the, um, fix the loop. Unfortunately, there was a speck of Venom that stayed behind, which I'll get into that after I tell this other scene. And then we get the part to the last cutscene, which is the Doctor Strange, Wanda, hopefully Loki, 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 um, multiverse mayhem, which it now tells what happens when the the three people that fucked up the multiverse, quote unquote, fucked up the multiverse, now are, are forced to fix it. And if you look at that trailer, 
I'm I'm putting out a bet. I'm putting I'm casting out a theory, a theory of my own that Miss Marvel is going to be in there because of the fact that there is a um there was a little girl with a star on her back, a, a jean jacket, and she is of Indian. She she's she's dark skinned. I'll be honest with y'all, she's dark skinned. She looks like she's Indian descent. Indian descent, but she's dark skinned. And if anyone knows, the new Miss Marvel, not Captain Marvel, um, is Indian. She has a star on her chest, um, and she's a little girl. <clears throat> so I'm willing to bet that Miss Marvel is going to be in this next movie. Um, but yeah, that was my take on the movie. Um, like I mentioned before, with the the going back to the cameo with um, Venom. They have Venom now. They're going to have Venom in the next, looks like it's going to be in the next um, movie, which makes sense with the Morp Morbius movie um, coming out. Now, now stick with me because, again, this is just strictly a theory that some way they're going to have um, this, this segment of Venom, this little piece of Venom um, is going to infect Peter. Um, making him giving us the black suit spider-man hopefully in the way that we wanted it not in the texture look um someone mentioned that flash thompson also became venom um which they may do that they may give a soldier venom which i kind of hope they don't i kind of while i i didn't have a problem with the comic version of soldier venom the the animated versions of them that's been in the um, that's been in like cartoons He's he's okay. I'm I'm not a fan of him, which they, I kind of see like I could see that them doing that because the Flash Thompson character is a fanboy of Spider Man to the degree of the animated series. Not even like the um, not even the old animated series, more so of the newer ones where he's just a massive fanboy. And when if you found out who Peter was, he would do anything for him, and that's what he did in the in the uh, movie. So I'm, I'm hoping that they just have another version of Eddie Brock, but I'm willing to bet that they're going to turn uh, Soldier Venom into it. They're going to bring Soldier Venom into the MCU. Um, but like I said, the first half of the movie, it was kind of mid. Um, I didn't like that they tried to rescue the people. Um, don't get me wrong. I understand the reason why in Aunt May. Um, that is an Aunt May thing. Hell, even Spider-Man, I would have believed that if he could save those people realistically, he would try to. I just feel like that was they were forcing a narrative that didn't need to be that didn't need to be done. Like you you have absolutely no idea that these people are going to be even saved after you cure them. They could just be cured and then go back to their world and be damned because they're still gonna die. Um so she kind of died for no no reason whatsoever. And then the point of which that she died and gave the speech of the with great power comes great responsibility and then dies was was dumb as hell because one, you didn't say that, and two, you there was no point in your death. Like Peter already had the Toby Maguire death. Not Toby Maguire, he already had the uh Tony Stark death, which gave us no way home. Where we had to deal with the fact that there is no Tony anymore. That he is alone. That not alone, but he there is no Tony. That wherever he goes, he's always going to see Tony for his sacrifice. That was his Uncle Ben. And when people were upset that that was that we one didn't have an Uncle Ben segment <clears throat> in um, uh, Homecoming. That the now Uncle Ben segment was the end game. I, I just want to know how the world's going to feel about now being reminded again that um, that the Uncle Ben segment has been not only replaced. By not even having Uncle Ben, but having a Aunt May that dies. Um, I did like to see all the callbacks, all the callbacks and the characters. It was amazing. Um, so Tom, Tom Holland, he, I, I have said that he was a a bad, not a bad Spider Man. He was not my Spider Man, and. I will say even now, he's still not my Spider-Man. That is still Tobey Maguire is my Spider-Man, but he deserves the mantle of Spider-Man. I'm saying this now um, because as a Spider-Man fan who was not a Tom Holland fan as Spider-Man, he has changed. I felt the emotion when he had to tell when he had to tell MJ that, you know, thank you for the coffee and just walked away. I felt that he, he wanted to be with her, but he realized that he could not. Any lesser man... Me 
one he had that that diner scene with Zendaya would have been like and and there's a meme of someone already made this quote made this post but I'm gonna do it again when when he saw Zendaya he would have been like baby it's me do you remember it's me it's me it's you it's 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 Peter crying snotting all of that I I would have been him I would have been that bitch I would have been snotting tear it up crying forget all of that just like but it's me but yeah that 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 touch that that hurt right here. Um, but yeah, that was, that was my take on the Spider-Man movie guys. Um, like I said, you let me know what you guys think about it. Once you go see it, I'm hoping to have this episode out relatively soon because, um, while I don't want to spoil it, I do want it to, I do want to get a take on other people's take on this movie. With all that being said, I'll see you guys again later once I have my setup done. Otherwise, catch you again. Peace.